I tried to blow up a YouTube video as fast as I could, but it wasn't easy. One of the things I hate most about running a YouTube education channel is getting comments like this. <laughs> Poor ego. Now, based on my experience working on other channels and getting like lots of views there, I feel like the information I share in my videos is accurate and relevant. But the problem is the types of videos I'm creating just don't really lend themselves to getting hundreds of thousands of views. At least that's what I was telling myself. Because to be completely honest, part of the reason I hate those comments so much is because there's a tiny little voice in the deep dark corners of my mind that whispers, maybe they're right. There was only one way to find out. So I decided to go all out, blow up a video, get hundreds of thousands of views in weeks, punch imposter syndrome in the face, and prove all of the haters wrong. Easy, right? <laughs> I'm in danger! But as I began this challenge, I realized that I had to fix a massive problem on my channel before I could even try and blow up a video. See, I'm always telling you guys that as a small channel, it's really beneficial to focus on a niche because it allows you to make your content better faster, and it trains the algorithm on who your viewers actually are, so it can promote your videos to more of those people. And ironically, I have not been following my own advice. <laughs> Classic. So in the past, I've talked about two different ways to get views, one of which is trend surfing. So jumping on something that's really popular at the right time, riding that wave. And then the other one is finding niche search terms that are underserved, but have a lot of demand and then creating videos for them. For example, when the PlayStation 5 came out, I created this video, how to live stream on PS5, and it got 229,000 views. Or this video, how to record on Xbox Series. Series X for one hour. Again, jumped on a trend as that came out and I got 170,000 views. Or well, this video, how to record on PlayStation 5, around 65,000 views. But even though these types of videos were getting me hundreds of thousands of views, the problem was they were bringing people to my channel who weren't actually in my niche. Think about this, this channel is dedicating to helping you guys get results, which for a YouTuber is basically views and subscribers. So all of my content ultimately should lead to those two things, how to get views and subscribers. The problem is when you think about it, these types of videos aren't about how to grow on YouTube. They're actually more tech tutorials, which is not the kind of person I want to attract. Attracting someone who wants to live stream on YouTube might not be a good idea for me because I don't teach people how to live stream on my channel. Or attracting someone who wants to record videos on Xbox might not be the type of person who actually wants to learn how to get views and subscribers. Maybe they just want to clip their gameplay and save it for later for personal reasons. Now you might say, yeah, Marcus, but some of those people probably are YouTubers and you're right. But the purpose of picking a niche is to be super, super highly targeted so you are the perfect channel for a small percentage of people rather than an all right channel for a larger percentage of people. So in chasing more short-term views and subscribers and stuff, in the long term, I stuffed myself up here because it screwed up a bunch of my data and confused YouTube about who my audience actually are. So you might be wondering, well, Marcus, how do you fix this? <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> So I went through my entire channel, picked out the videos that I felt really didn't fit within my niche or were just flat out like absolutely terrible. Look how many videos here are in red. And you know what red means? I'm gonna delete them. So I deleted them and it actually led to quite a funny graph because you can see on some of these external third party softwares, there's like my graph growing, growing, views are growing, views are growing, views are growing, boom, negative 600,000 views. <laughs> oh man. Now that I fix this problem, I can move on to the next most important step that will be the thing that will either make or break this video I'm trying to blow up. But before I show you that, I wanna show you something else real quick. Now, ironically for a YouTube guy, my setup is actually pretty terrible. I had to ask you, what are those? The funny thing is I used to work as a professional videographer, so I actually have all the professional equipment, the DSLR cameras, the expensive microphones, all that stuff. I don't wanna have to get out my camera and pick the lens and set it up and put it on a stand. And that's why the Insta360 webcam I'm filming with right now is perfect for me because it's 4K, 30 frames per second. And I love it because it's like it was built for lazy people. For example, if I sit down and I'm in a slightly different position to where I would normally sit. In the past, I would have to go up and adjust my camera angle so that I'm center frame and like who can be bothered doing that? With this, I can literally put my hand up and then it actually tracks me where I move. So I can sit down, I just put my hand up and it will just center itself on me and I'm ready to go. It also automatically flips down when I'm not using it so no one can hijack your webcam and blackmail you if you're the kind of person who appreciates our gentlemanly sights, shall we call them.
So if you're after a decent YouTube setup, but you're incredibly lazy like me, the Insta360 webcam might be a good option for you. They actually sponsored this video, so I wanna thank them for that. And so I'll leave a link down in the description. But speaking of lazy, another thing I've done that's really held my channel back is that a lot of the videos I've been creating are just videos that I want to create. And I know a lot of YouTube gurus and stuff out there talk about things like, oh, passion is the most important thing. While I hate to be the crusher of rainbows, pixie dust and unicorns, it's just not the case in my experience. People don't care how much passion I have for Taylor Swift Mongolian throat singing parodies. If I post a Taylor Swift Mongolian throat singing parody on this channel, it's not gonna get views because nobody other than me cares. And YouTube is not about the creator, YouTube is about the viewer. You'll get views on videos your audience wants to watch. And so while me just going out there and creating whatever video I think would be good is valuable for the small percentage of people who actually just watch every single video I create because they trust me, it's not gonna reach a very large audience. And there are two primary reasons for this. If you're a small channel in a similar circumstance, you'll probably have to fix these two problems as well. One is that if you don't know me and my story, I have absolutely no credibility. I can create a video that tells you to do X, Y, and Z, but the thing you have in the back of your mind is, does this guy actually know what he's talking about? Am I gonna waste my time? Is he just trying to clickbait me for views? Which is a very reasonable thing to think because I hate to say it, but a lot of people out there, that's what they're doing. The other problem I have is my video ideas aren't really that good. And it doesn't matter how great of a title, writer, or thumbnail designer you are, if the idea itself isn't great, there's not a whole lot you can do. I'd just sit down, talk about whatever I think is important, and then afterwards figure out what's an okay title and a thumbnail I can slap onto this. And while that worked for me, because again, I'm lazy, it was uh, not amazing for my channel. <laughs> And so to blow up a video, I realized I had to fix these two problems. And if you're a small channel in a similar circumstance, you'll probably have to fix these two problems as well. Now, in terms of the credibility issue, that one's a tricky one because you can build credibility over time, but I want to blow up a video now. And so I thought to myself, who slash what is the most trusted source of information on YouTube? Who is the person that people look up to as the number one YouTube genius? It's actually not YouTube because people don't trust YouTube as much because their statements are often vague in general and PR doctored. The answer I came up with was Mr. Beast. Based on polls I've done, based on talking to people, everyone basically thinks he's the number one YouTube genius. And so I thought, what if I can create a video that draws on the authority of Mr. Beast? Sounds like a good concept. It makes the video more objectively interesting and it doesn't require people to actually trust me in order to click on and watch the video. Now that sounds all well and good, but there's no way in hell I'm ever going to get an interview with Mr. Beast. And even people who do have podcasts with Mr. Beast, sometimes those videos only get hundreds of thousands of views, which don't get me wrong, is good. But I wanted, you know, better than good. I wanted exceptional. So I did some thinking and some research. And then I remembered once I was sitting next to my brother and I looked across and he was watching YouTube on his phone. And the video he was watching was called Tom Holland being a meme for seven minutes straight or something like that. And I thought, huh, what if I can take my Mr. Beast concept and squash it into that idea and do something like Mr. Beast being a YouTube genius for 10 minutes straight. And so I did more research and brainstorming. But at the end of the day, I came to the conclusion that, hey, I think this idea actually has a lot of potential and no one in my niche has done anything similar before. So I'm going to have the first movers advantage, which as I've talked about in other videos is really important if you want a viral video. But just having a good idea and hijacking some authority doesn't necessarily mean your video is going to blow up. And for a video that you want to go viral, you need to package it strategically. See, a lot of the videos on my channel in the past might be about specific topics that are really important to YouTube. For example, how to improve your click through rate. And for a percentage of people, that type of video is very engaging and enticing. But even though I think talking about the information is really important, as that video gets expanded to a larger audience, all of a sudden it becomes less sexy, less interesting, less people click on it and it gets less views. And one of the reasons for that is that many people might not really know how important click-through rate is, or if they do, they don't really understand how important it is. And so they dismiss the video, they don't click on YouTube, stop serving it. And so I knew for a viral video like this, I needed to be broad and something, pretty much every person who's considered being on YouTube or even people who maybe don't even care about being a YouTuber at all would still be able to relate to. Now, obviously I want it to be highly appealing to my specific niche to begin with, but I also need to be very strategic about how as this expands, I need to make it as unlikely as possible that people will not click on it, not enjoy it, because that'll send negative signals to the algorithm and it will kill it prematurely. And a niche that does this really well is like the motivation and inspiration type niche, because things like motivation, inspiration, and self-improvement are so broad that they kind of have to package their video in a broad way. And a theme 
I noticed is that a lot of these self-improvement motivationally style videos talk about time. Either here's how you do something really quickly or this thing only takes X amount of time per day or you're wasting all of your time. And I thought that's an interesting angle that I could apply to this video because it's very relevant to YouTubers. One of the most hated things by YouTubers is taking a lot of time to grow. You feel like you're wasting your time. But even if you're not a hardcore YouTuber, you can still relate to how it feels to waste time and it you know kind of feels shitty for most people and so I decided to go with the thumbnail of Mr. Beast looking like he's preaching to you with text on there saying you are wasting your time and the title for that video is Mr. Beast being a YouTube genius for 10 minutes straight my editor who's an absolute legend took every Mr. Beast interview and video we've ever watched and cut it all down into our favorite 10 minutes of the best gold nuggets Mr. Beast has ever dropped so we created the video we were super excited and then we launched it and I remember waking up the next morning I was super excited to check out the video and see you know how many tens of thousands of views has it got? And um, it did a lot better than previous videos, but um, I was a bit disappointed. And that's uh, when I realized that it hadn't blown up. Relative to other videos I'd posted on my channel, it had done pretty well. In the first 24 hours, it had got about 2,300 views, which made it, you know, a one out of 10, because at the time I posted that video, most of my videos only really got, you know, 1.5K views max in that period. So it was a good video, but it wasn't going viral. And I thought I'd done everything right. I was supposed to be this YouTube person who knows what they're talking about. So I dived into the analytics, tried to figure out what the problem was. I found one small thing, and that was we have this very short intro clip that was kind of hurting retention and so I'll just cut that out and see what happens and it improved the performance a bit but you know look at this a week later it had 4,000 views and two weeks later it only had 4,600 views and you know it just grew incredibly slowly faster than most of my videos but it wasn't blowing up and I remember thinking you know maybe the haters are right maybe I have lost touch a bit and so I eventually moved on but then a few months later I logged into my analytics one day and things just looked crazy and between the periods of Tuesday 25th of October that Mr. Beast video went from 12,000 views to 261,000 views and then over the course of the following week the video blew up and hit 1 million views and it just kept growing and growing and growing until now as of recording this video it's about to hit 2 million views Okay, I didn't create this video to brag, well, maybe a little bit, but I wanted to record and share this journey with you guys because this process of refining your niche, making sure your videos are targeted to your audience and that niche, coming up with good ideas, positioning those ideas well. This applies to any YouTube channel that wants to be successful. If you're not succeeding, there's a really big chance you're getting some of these things wrong. But if you're sure that you are doing these things, just keep being consistent. Because as you can see, sometimes YouTube just needs some time to find the right audience. And when it does, things like this happen. So beyond working on the things I just talked about, what should you do now if you want to blow up your next video? Well, on screen is a video you actually just heard about the making of. Believe it or not, Mr. Beast actually also has some really good tips to help you grow your channel. So click that video on screen and I'll see you there.